Hey everyone, Marcus Philly here from functionalbodybuilding.com. Before I started functional bodybuilding, I was a competitive CrossFit athlete. And in my last year uh, of competition, 2016, I placed 12th in the world at the CrossFit Games. So we're in the thick of the CrossFit Games season in 2021. And whenever the CrossFit Games season rolls around, I always get the question, hey Marcus, how would you do in a competition like that today? And really the question behind the question is, that a lot of athletes found functional bodybuilding because competitive fitness was crushing their bodies and they needed to change gears and they haven't lost that competitive spark just like me. Well, I can tell you right now that training to look good and move well is very different than competition prep. But what exactly does competition prep look like? And if you could see it, what can you take away to help guide your own training and nutrition plan? Well, I dug into my old training and food journals from my last competitive prep season, and I'm gonna take on a full day of training and eating just like I did in 2016 and show you exactly what happens and the difference and how to shape your fitness plan for your goals. Okay, I'm hitting my first of three sessions today and I always started with aerobic work in the morning because of three key reasons. Number one, getting up in the morning and moving blood is a great way to shake off the rust from the day before. Number two, having an aerobic base of fitness has huge translations to the sport of CrossFit and to all walks of life. We needed to have a massive base of aerobic fitness to be successful in the sport of CrossFit. And then number three, by doing aerobic base training on a regular basis, it actually improves your recovery time from sessions that you do that are higher intensity and you involve weight training. So in order to keep up with the high volume of competition training, having an aerobic base was essential. If you have time, aerobic work is actually a great thing to do in the morning, even for non-competitive athletes. But the difference here is in, in intent. My intention was prepping for regionals competition. For you, it might just be getting up in the morning and getting blood moving, which could be a walk for 30 minutes, 15 minutes, or doing some flow stretching, something like that in your living room. You can see by the relative intensity of what I'm doing on the rower for 30 minutes of total duration that my intensity was a little bit higher than what you might need in your life for a morning cardio session, and the volume might be a little bit bigger, but I was prepping for competition, so therefore I needed to keep up with the level of training that I had been doing for the months prior. Like all the workouts I did today, I tried to keep up with the paces that I held back in 2016, and I was intimidated by that because I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to match my performance from five years ago. I held my paces, I was feeling quite good by the end of the 30 minutes, it got me ready and raring to go for the day, and it actually always helped me digest my breakfast better. Doing a little bit of movement in the morning, getting out for cardio, doing something like rowing, it always helped me process the food that I was gonna put in right after that meal. So any cardio can do this, and even going for a brisk walk can help you digest and absorb your nutrients better from your breakfast. Well, just like the good old days, I just finished my morning cardio session. I did some rowing intervals, you saw that and now it's time to get breakfast going. And the difference between now and when I was competing in CrossFit is I've got two baby girls, and one of them just called me into her room because she had a poopy diaper. So I'm gonna juggle getting them ready for school, getting their breakfasts ready, getting my breakfast ready, and then also prepping out the rest of my meals for today. And I haven't had anything to eat yet. All I've had is black coffee today. I'm ready to get something in my system to handle the next couple sessions that are coming up. So let's check it out. I think the first thing to note here when you're looking at my meals, particularly breakfast, and you'll see this at lunch as well, is that back in 2016, my training volume was much higher and there was a lot more intensity to my training, which you'll also see coming soon. Therefore, my need for carbohydrates was significantly higher. Carbohydrates were a major fuel source for the CrossFit athlete, as well as a recovery tool to get you back feeling your best for the next day in training. I had carbohydrates at almost every single meal, and it's almost double the amount, if not triple the amount, of what I eat on an average typical day today. So as you see, I'm eating oatmeal at breakfast, you'll see rice at both of my next meals, and then lots of sugars in the shakes that I'll be drinking around my workouts. 
All the foods that I chose for my breakfast were really easy to digest. I was going to have a training session about two hours later, most typically, and therefore I didn't want something heavy that was going to linger around. And as a matter of fact, all the meals that I was eating back in my training days from when I started training in the morning until my last training session, the things that I was consuming during the day had to be easy to get through my system. I didn't want to have something keeping me heavy and absorbing a lot of my energy trying to digest food when I wanted to be focused on my training. So eggs do that for me, oatmeal did that for me, some whey protein in my oatmeal, a little bit of nut butter, and like a light piece of fruit was always my go-to for breakfast in the morning. All right, it's time for training session two. And this was the big training session of my day. What was programmed was some strength work, then a tester or something that was gonna simulate regionals competition, followed by some high threshold aerobic volume building as well. The reason it was always programmed this way, my strength work was not meant at this stage of the season to try and get me stronger. It was to maintain my strength. So I was doing jerks and some jerk skill work and some overhead pressing just to keep my top end strength there. Secondly, the competition regionals simulation workout that was prescribed was meant to push me to try and excel and get my best time possible. This was the, the workout that I would think about in my training sessions leading up to a competition that I put my mind exactly in the mindset of what I would be doing on the competition floor. Maximize transition times, get my scores as fast as possible, think about all my technique that would improve my pace, and then of course, learning how to pace myself with a variety of different weights and movements. Functional bodybuilding workouts that I write now for myself and for thousands of people around the world, they involve all the same movements. 
it's just about the intent being different. The intent of regionals prep was to maintain peak strength heading into competition. It was to push myself as fast as possible on workouts. It was to build volume at a high intensity level so that I could simulate the fatigue of competition. Whereas in functional bodybuilding on an everyday basis, I don't need some of those things. I wanna use the same movements and I wanna keep my fitness level high, but I do not need to push that threshold because I'm not going out to earn points at a competition. So that's the key difference between how FBB training today differs from my regionals prep training from 2016. Because I always had a session coming later in the day, I tried to get a lot of my nutrition through liquid and through liquid calories when I was doing these big sessions like the second session of my day. Oftentimes, sugars were a big component of that. There were some amino acids that I would take and then some whey protein. So during my workout, it was always something sugar-based. It could have been a Gatorade. It could have been another powdered sugar that was out there, a maltodextrin or something like that. I would take some amino acids. And then post-workout, I would get another big drink of sugars and whey protein. I found in the past that there were brands of whey protein that combine sugars or carbohydrates with it. I always was shooting for a three or four carbohydrate to one protein combination. That was what worked best for me. So three to one or four to one was how I ended up actually consuming my liquid sugars and protein during these big training sessions. Now, while my 2016 self needed a lot of those sugars, I don't need them so much today. Recovery shakes were good back in the day because they were quick and easy to ingest to get the added calories that I needed to recover from my training sessions. But for a typical athlete who trains once a day, I would recommend getting nutrients from whole foods, which is a much, much easier way to stay with healthier digestion, to reach your macronutrient goals for the day, to stay satiated much longer, and to avoid the inevitable crash that used to always come after having big, big in ingestions of sugar after training. About two hours, three hours later, I would be quite sleepy. And if you're trying to maintain energy throughout the day for your job and for your life, don't fall victim to the trap of trying to pump a bunch of sugars because you likely don't need them if you're in the look good, move well audience that we speak to so often. And finally, the volume of training that I needed in order to simulate what a regionals competition would feel like needed to be a little bit higher. So we always prescribed some added sets at the end of my training that would involve a variety of different movements just to keep touches on them, but to push my intensity a little bit and to get me working really hard so that the next test that was coming this afternoon was a little bit more demanding because I was under more stress and fatigue from earlier in the day.
mixing up my carbs and protein. I already had a bunch of carbs and protein during the training session. I think all together, like 120 grams of carbohydrates or Gatorade powder and about 30 grams, no, 20 grams of whey protein. I'm gonna do another session in about an hour and a half. So this will hold me over for that. Post thoughts on today's session. It really confirmed something that I knew about myself, which is people ask me, hey, how, how would you compete against your old times or, or your former competitors? And I said, you know, I still have the skills to go one good session, maybe one full day at regionals or a semifinal, but that wrecked me. I do not have a lot left in the tank for the afternoon session. I got pretty much all my old times. I couldn't lift as much as I did five years ago on my jerks, but I matched or beat my times on the Metcons, but I'm pretty spent. I had to give it all I had for that last set, and uh, I'm like dreading 70 pull-ups later on today. So my shakes held me over until training session three. I would have typically gotten in some work in between, which I did today as well, but here I am doing training session three. The intent of this session is to simulate single event. All it was was one benchmark workout to come in, prepare for, and then to give my maximal effort at. Now, the regionals athlete of 2016, Marcus, always looked at the workout that was at hand and had a general estimate as to how long this was gonna take. I knew this workout was roughly a three minute workout, therefore I would have prepared and warmed up my body for quite some time beforehand because it was gonna be very intense, probably a 15 to 30 minute warm up just to complete a three minute intensive workout. Now, historically, squats and pull-ups were always my, my jam. It was what I was known for, it was what I was really good at, and I rarely placed outside of the top placements in the world on a workout that consisted of these two things. Now, with that said, it had been quite some time on this particular day since I had done this many kipping pull-ups in a single workout. Matter of fact, probably six months since I had done a kipping pull-up in any workout since we emphasize so much strict upper body strength in functional bodybuilding. So I have to say, I was a bit nervous that I had 90 repetitions of kipping pull-ups to do in this particular workout, but as you'll see, I got them done. Fuori questo caos, mi mente in paranoia, sto poi faccio un gay house Se corri come me, o corri come me, magari te lo sai Potremmo star soli da me, magari stanotte buttarci in spiaggia con un narghile Vieni con me, cerchiamo un altro club, solo io e te
And of course, going into this workout, I had my old time from 2016 that I was going to aim to beat, although I was pretty confident that that might be out of reach today because of the lack of preparation I had done in kipping pull-ups. I was happy to find out that I got relatively close to my time. I broke up my sets of pull-ups strategically so that I could optimize my score for today, Marcus of 2021, and it went quite well. What I love about this workout and this particular demonstration is that there's a lot of misconceptions around thinking that I want to be able to do a lot of pull-ups so that therefore I need to go out and do a workout with 100, 200, 300 pull-ups in it every single day like a Murph type workout. And what this really showcases is that if we commit to strong positions, if we commit to building strength and you already have the skill of let's say a kipping pull-up, those skills and the volume that you put in on strength will suffice to keep your fitness level relatively high for something like a workout that I just did called Josh. So don't fall victim to this trap of thinking, if I don't do 100 pull-ups every day, I'm gonna lose my, my, my ability. You need to focus on good positions and strength like we do in functional bodybuilding. So a few notes about the nutrition of a day like today. First off, when you're competing for sport, the goal is not body composition, the goal is performance. And whatever fuels performance is got to be what you focus on. So there was a lot of sugars. I ate a lot of calories. I always tried to make sure I had enough to recover from my training. And oftentimes that wasn't optimal for body composition. I used to carry about 10 more pounds of body weight back in the day. And there was always a layer of fluff that was on my body that was more of like absorbing water and holding on to water from the intensity and all of the sugars and some added inflammation that was happening in my body. Today, I focus on a great importance of quality food over processed food. As you can see, there was a lot of processed shakes that were in my meals in my day of competition prep. But today, I just cut those out and I focus on the quality food that is there in the meals that you saw today. So even though you have to take a little bit of a sacrifice to make sure you're getting in enough nutrients and enough sugars to recover in a sport like CrossFit, I always valued quality food wherever possible. And whether you're in competition or normal life, having that quality base of protein, vegetables, carbohydrates from whole food sources, this is going to reduce your total stress load on your day. One final thought here is that there is a big trade-off when you drink or eat a lot of sugars, even if it's helping you recover from your training. There are some digestive issues that can result from that. And when you focus more on a whole food diet, you can optimize your digestion, which is going to lead to much better body composition for most people that are approaching a look good, move well lifestyle. So my reflections on the day, well, first and foremost, I felt very nervous coming into doing this particular day. I really wasn't sure how it was going to feel. I was anxious about how much it was going to be uh, a challenge for my, my body, but also mentally, could I, how would I feel not living up to my fitness levels of five years ago? So my expectations were low of what I was going to be able to perform at. I was surprised to see that pretty much across the board, with the exception of my ability to produce maximal strength overhead, I held up to my old times, and it's a testament to keeping up a great base of fitness with functional bodybuilding over the past many years that I could do this on a single day. I will say that I do not pretend to be at the same level of fitness that I was back in 2016, because the day that followed this particular competition prep simulation, I was crushed, and I absolutely had no intention of going back in and completing another day and another day and another day of it. So while I did well for a single day of training, not competition, but training, I didn't have it in me to do it for five days in a row, a month, three months, or even a year in a row. That's what separates competition training from functional bodybuilding. Perhaps the biggest difference in training today for me versus back then outside of the amount of training and the intensity of the training is just the mental preoccupation with training. When you compete uh, and when you perform in a sport, it takes a lot of mental energy as well as physical energy. Today, I want my body to perform and I want my workouts to take physical energy, but I don't want to stress about it. 
I want to make sure that I leave mental capacity as well as my emotional availability there for my job, for my family, and for other parts of my life. And therefore, functional bodybuilding is designed in such a way that it allows me to go know that I'm getting a great training stimulus, know that I'm keeping my body balanced, know that I'm maintaining a high level of fitness, but that I don't have to stay up the night before stressing about the reps, stressing about the strategy, stressing about the pain that I'm going to be in the next day because the workouts are going to be so intense. That is the key, key difference between what looks like my training today versus what it looked like five years ago. Today, I train to look good and move well. I want to be the best for my life, but like I said at the beginning, I still got a little bit of competitive itch. I like to push myself periodically. And the great thing about FBB training is that you can still do it in a controlled environment. And that's what we do with our training programs. We keep you in a controlled environment and then periodically push you out of your comfort zone so that you can experience what your body is capable of without taking too much away from the rest of your life. I also truly appreciate the draw of competitive fitness training because it is such a measurable way to look at success. Hey, I'm improving my numbers. I'm getting faster. I'm getting stronger. I'm beating all the other people on the whiteboard. And for that, I do appreciate that people want to experience some measurable signal of success. And today, I see different ways to measure my success outside my times and my weights. I like to look at how I'm building stronger ranges of motion, how I'm able to go in and feel effortless when I float over the box jumps that I did in today's workout, when my ankle and knee flexibility and my hip health allow me to bound over that box, get into a deep squat and feel good. This is a huge sign of success for me now in my goals of my current life. So I assure you that you can find measures of success in training that transcends your competitive approach to, to fitness, even inside a functional bodybuilding context. So if you wanna test yourself and set goals in your fitness, but still maintain balance in your life, then click the link in the description below, find out more about how you can get into our individual coaching program. That's right, you can work with a functional bodybuilding master coach to customize your training, your lifestyle, and your nutrition program. That way you can look good, move well, and get after it too. I hope you enjoyed this. Take care.